Good morning, Sanctuary Church. How y'all doing this fine March Sunday? Amen. Amen to the person in the front row. <laughs> uh, but yeah, gl glad to see you here this morning. Uh, we love you. We thank you for joining us this morning. We love you. And um, let's get our worship on. Amen. Amen. Can I get an amen? Woo! Let's go. worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We sing to There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Redeemed by his grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. We are the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Accepted, redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise.
in church, can you make a joyful noise this morning and praise God? You are free in the house. I want to welcome you and say thank you so much for joining us. My name is Stephanie, and I'm so glad to be able to worship with you this morning. If it is your first time, we are so excited that you chose to worship with us. And there on the back seat in front of you, there are QR codes. We encourage you to scan those, and you can let us know a little bit about yourself. Um, if it's not your first time, you can still use those QR codes to um, give or find out any information that you need to know about what's going on at Sanctuary Church throughout the week. And as we continue in worship this morning, I encourage you to lift your hands, worship God. This place is a free place where you can come and be who you are to worship and love on God. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything hinder you because this is your house to worship in, not just the people on stage or the pastors, this is where you are free to worship God. So I encourage you this morning, lay down whatever you work, walk through this week. Don't let anything hold you back from worshiping God because he gives you freedom and grace and mercy to do that. And so as we continue to worship, I encourage you to walk in that freedom. Let's pray and we'll continue worshiping. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you, God, that you have given us a place where we are free to worship you. God, there's a lot of places in this world where people are not free to speak your name, not free to worship you, not free to love you and believe in you. God, but we have that freedom, and you give us that freedom. And so, Lord, we stand in that. And I pray, Lord, that you will just work in each person, God. God, move hearts. God, change lives. And allow this to be a brand new day for each person that has walked in this room, God, or each person that is watching online. God, let us lay down any burdens, any hindrances, Lord, so that we can run freely in your worship, God. Run freely in your grace. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Through you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I am living by faith, nothing is impossible. I 
can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. I still got joy.
said before that the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept but it's not the only one there's a balance to tears and that's joy church because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 it says rejoice always 
as a counter to those tears. So where there were tears, there will be joy. He will turn your mourning into dancing. There's a spirit of joy and jubilee falling on his church this morning. The shortest verse in the Bible is countered by the other shortest verse in the Bible. Where Jesus wept, you can rejoice always, church. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and you will be glad and rejoice. Joy is strength, joy is power, and joy will get you through. Joy isn't about smiling and dancing and singing and laughing. Joy is something deep in the profound chambers of your spirit. There is joy inside of your heart this morning, church, because Jesus lives. We serve an awesome God, a powerful God. It doesn't matter when the storms come and batter your house. As long as it's built on the rock, those walls are never coming down. They're never going to fall. Oh, the rain came and the wind blew and I'm safe
There is a name that the Bible tells us is above every name. The only name by which men are saved. The name at which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord forever and ever. We call him Jesus. His family and his friends, the people that lived with him in the time that he walked this earth, would have called him Yeshua. We call him Jesus, which is the, the anglicized version, the pronunciation. For any of my, perhaps, Latino friends in the room, you might have the way that, that white people call you your name and then the way that your people call you your name, right? When we say the name of Jesus, we are establishing not only power over everything in this world that wants to big dog us, that wants to tell us this is how things are, we are speaking the name that is above every name. So perhaps you're, you have a diagnosis that says, no, the name that's spoken over you is, is cancer. The name that's spoken over you is depression. The name that's spoken over you, your diagnosis does not have a higher name than Jesus. Perhaps there is a person or a power or a force that is antagonizing you and they're overpowering you and overtaking you. Write their name down and then above it, several lines write Jesus because there is nothing that will ever come against you that has a higher name than Jesus. It's the ultimate, can I speak to your manager? There is no name above the name of Jesus. He is as high as we can go. And when we declare that name today, when we say Jesus, 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 when we speak it in his tongue and say Yeshua, 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 we are releasing not only the authority that we can speak the name above all names, but the intimacy that we can call upon the Savior of the world. We can call him our beloved. We can call him our beautiful. We can call him our friend. We can speak to him with intimacy. We're not just name dropping. We're calling out on the Savior who hears our hearts and our voices today. I'm going to step out of the way and I'm going to encourage the worship team just to lead us in this for just another moment. But as you sing it, whether you've heard that word Yeshua before or this is your first time and you go, I don't know what that means, you are simply speaking the name of Jesus. And know that when you call his name, he hears and he responds. Declare his name over your circumstances. Write his name on your heart today. He is here. He is here and he is worthy. Can we sing that? again and give him praise today.
God, I thank you for who you are. God, I thank you that you are over everything in my life, God, over everything in our lives, God. You are in control, God, and we surrender that to you right now in this moment. Lord, I just pray that you will be with each person, God, and meet each need exactly where it needs to be met, Lord. Sometimes we have these ideas of what we want from you, God, but you know what we need. You know you know where you need to meet us, Lord. God, so I pray that you will walk alongside of us. God, that you will heal us, God, where there needs to be healing, Lord, that you will deliver us, God, where, where there needs to be deliverance, Lord, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way. God, in this moment, we surrender to you. We lay it all down at your feet because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. You are Yeshua. Your name is above every name. God, and we recognize that and we surrender to that because you are good and you've never failed us, God. You've never given us a reason to ever walk away, God. God, you are, you are never failing, unwavering. And God, our, our foundation is set on you. God, we ask that you will move and continue to move in this service, God. God, even, even when the music is over and, and when, when Pastor Tony's on stage, God, speaking the word that you have given him, God, I pray that you will plant those seeds in our hearts, God, so that they sprout and grow into this amazing harvest, God, where we can take it and use it in our lives and to spread your word to your people. God, we love you, we trust you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. God, er, church, can we give God some praise this morning? And as you finish worshiping, you may take a seat. Um, if you are still worshiping, continue doing what you're doing. Um, we're going to continue on in worship with our giving. And we are just going to be faithful to God this morning. Just as you are faithful in your worship, faithful in your praise to him, let's continue to be faithful in giving to our church, to our community, with our time, with our money. Whatever the Lord has placed on your heart, I encourage you to give this morning. Um, and there are many ways for you to do that. You can do that on our website. Um, you can do that through the Church Center app. You can scan the QR code in front of you. Um, there's also going to be buckets. So if you have physical money, you can put that in the bucket. We'll take that too. Um, everything that you give goes towards the kingdom of God. Giving Sanctuary Church the ability to spread God's love, spread God's word. And so I encourage you this morning to be faithful with that and to give and know that God will return that back to you. Because God is not one who is selfish and just wants everything you have, but God wants to bless you and open those windows of heaven and pour them out on you. And so this morning, the ushers are going to come. We're going to pray. And I encourage you to just give what the Lord has placed on your heart and see if God will bless you and turn that back around to you and your family and your life. And trust God with that. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to give God to sow into your kingdom. God, I pray, Lord, that you will bless the gift and the giver, Lord, and, and every person that's watching online, every person that's in this room, even those that are far away, God, that may not be able to physically be here, God, those that are giving into your kingdom, God, sowing seeds, that they may never, ever be able to physically go and do something, God, but they are able to give through money, God, worship you with their giving, and so I pray, Lord, that you will open the windows of heaven and bless your people. God, return what they have given 10 times, God. God, we trust you with every area of our life, including our finances, because we know that you are in control of all things. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name, amen. So as you are giving this morning, go ahead and turn your attention to the screen. We have some announcements to show you. Church fam, it's Sabrina from the worship team here to fill you in on some awesome stuff coming up. First off, if you want to stay in the loop with everything going on, make sure to download the Church Center app. 
It's your one-stop shop for upcoming events, easy online giving, and staying plugged in. Just head to the App Store or Google Play and download it today. All right, let's talk Easter. Next week, we're gearing up for one of the biggest celebrations of the year. We're throwing open our doors to the community, inviting everyone to join us as we honor Jesus' sacrifice and triumphant resurrection. Kicking things off this Friday is our Good Friday Communion, featuring a special presentation from Dr. Michael Hertz, a Jewish believer in Jesus. He'll be walking us through Israel's freedom from slavery in Egypt and how it ties into the redemption we find in Christ. Plus, there's a Passover meal happening where we'll dive into the rich tradition of God's redemption. Then, mark your calendars for Easter Sunday where we'll throw down a massive resurrection celebration followed by an epic egg hunt for the kiddos. But we need your help. Swing by guest services today to grab some invite cards and consider donating candy to make our egg hunt extra sweet. The week after Easter, we're hosting a special baptism service. Whether you're new to your faith journey or just haven't taken the plunge yet, this is your chance to publicly declare your commitment to Christ. Sign up on the Church Center app, and for the rest of us, let's stick around to support those taking this important step. And speaking of exciting news, this September, we're relaunching as VIEW Church. It's a big move for us, and we're pumped. Please keep us in your prayers as we embark on this new chapter. And if you feel led, consider contributing to our special launch fund. Together, we can make this vision a reality and impact lives in our community. Remember, there's always something happening here. So stay connected through your bulletin and on social media. God bless you all, and let's keep worshiping together. Shalom, I'm Mitch Glazer, president of Chosen People Ministries. I'm here in very busy New York City, right in front of our beautiful office. New York is known as the Jewish capital of America. This is the city where Chosen People was born, and I'm here to tell you that we're about to celebrate a very important festival, and that festival is Passover. We all know the story, don't we? The Hebrews were enslaved in Egypt. Moses was born in secret. He was saved by Pharaoh's daughter. He was appointed as a leader by God. He showed compassion for his fellow Hebrews, but then he had to run away. He became a shepherd and he found a burning bush. He was commanded by God to free the Jewish people. And he went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said no, and then there were plagues. And he went back to Pharaoh and there were more plagues. And finally came the 10th and most deadly plague, the killing of the firstborn. And those who killed the spotless lamb and put its blood over the doorposts and lintel of the home were spared. And at that point, Pharaoh literally kicked Moses out of Egypt. Now, there were some other dramatic moments, but ultimately, the children of Israel were delivered from Egypt. For many, the story stops there. But for us, as followers of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, it begins there. Passover is not only a beautiful tradition, it's an epic story of salvation and deliverance, of personal redemption and peace, shalom, that we experience today through the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We'll be gathering soon to remember and reflect on this wonderful holiday through the presentation called Messiah and the Passover. We'll learn together, we'll laugh together, we'll cry, we'll experience the joy of redemption and salvation. So bring your kids, bring some friends maybe who don't know the Lord, maybe even some Jewish friends, and we're going to have a wonderful, spiritual, joyful celebration together. So I'll see you at the table. Amen. That's going to be really unique. I'm excited about that. We are, uh, we're going to be celebrating that this week on Good Friday. Can you believe it is the Easter season? It is Holy Week already, and uh, very, very excited for that. This Friday coming up, uh, 7 o'clock in the room here, we're going to be having uh, a guest from Chosen People Ministry, Dr. Michael Hertz, who's going to take us through the traditional Passover dinner and, and draw a line from all of the symbolism of what God had set in place way back in the Old Testament that leads us straight to the cross and the empty tomb of Jesus. So it's, it's another reason to get celebrated. It's, it's one of those really, really cool things that I think uh, we're going to enjoy and be blessed by. So thank you so much for being here. God bless you this morning. What a wonderful time in worship. Can we show a, a appreciation to our leadership in worship ministry? 
and in the tech team too, because nothing happens uh, if you can't hear it. So <laughs> thank you guys. Um, amen, amen, amen. Uh, well, my name is Pastor Tony. I'm so grateful that you're with us here at the, the Sanctuary Church. Uh, someone asked me this morning if it's going to be hard for me to stop reflexively saying the name Sanctuary Church when we're no longer Sanctuary Church. Um, I have a feeling it's not going to be that hard. We've got six months to practice it. For those of you guys that are new and you're here maybe for the first time, you're like, I have no idea what that means. Uh, we were established in this community two and a half years ago as a satellite campus of a church named Sanctuary Church in Orlando. So we became Sanctuary Longwood. Uh, but over the course of a lot of hard work, preparation, and prayer on the behalf of leadership uh, here in, in the Longwood area and at the Orlando campus as well, we are going to be spinning off this fall into our own independent congregation uh, called View Church. Amen? And uh, we, you can get information about that in the lobby. View is V-U-E. We didn't just misspell it. It is spelled that way on purpose. V stands for vision. U stands for unity. And E stands for engagement. You guys are so good. And those aren't just three disconnected ideas that we slapped together. It wasn't like we went on the internet anagram server, you know, and went like, okay, we got a V. What word can we think of that starts with V? Vichy How about you? Umbilical cord. E. Hmm. Engagement. Uh, we didn't just slap them together because they misspelled a word that we liked. Um, we want to explain their connectedness, and we've been talking for the past couple weeks uh, about that. And this is engagement week. This is the E week. And this is one that particularly ministers to me. And I was thinking about, like, what's, how can I explain it? How can I just kind of get this thing, this party started in a way that can maybe make you kind of get with me? Let's get on the same page. What's a common shared experience? We have a whole group of people from a whole bunch of different backgrounds, life stories, and, and, but, but maybe, just maybe, you guys might be able to track along with me on this one. I eat dinner nearly every single day. Can I get an amen from the congregation? I enjoy dinner time. But with dinner time, leading up to dinner time, we go into something called the Valley of Decision. And it is a mysterious and nebulous place. It is the Bermuda Triangle of my culinary experience. Where a question is asked, but never answered. And that question is, what do you want to eat? To which I, 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 could just, I could just pre-record it and just hit a button, the what do you want to eat button. I don't know. Every single time. Is it just me or have you experienced this too? Every single time. And then we go into the great debate. Then we go into the big Plinko game of how are we going to decide what and where we're going to eat. Uh, how about burgers? No, I'm not feeling burgers. How about Italian food? We had Italian last night. How about Subway? I don't even know why you would ask that. <laughs> how about steak? We can't afford steak. <laughs> how about Mexican food? I can do Mexican food. And now we've got a decision, and we're going to have Mexican food, and that's not that. And now we, now we can take our, our course of action. Now we can decide what kind of Mexican food we're going to have. Are we going to go Taco Bell? Are we going to go Mexican food truck? Are we going to go like, you know, high-end Mexican food where they're selling the exact same food as they do at Taco Bell and the Mexican food truck, but just at three times the price? Listen, put a good queso in front of me and I'll pay for it. Don't get it twisted. I am easily, easily uh, fooled. So we decide. Now we got a decision. Now, move, now I'm hungry. Who wants to just wrap this thing up and go get some Mexican food right now? Tableside guacamole, you got to pay extra for it. I know you have to pay extra for it. I want it. So we're going to go. We're going to make some tacos for dinner tonight because I like tacos. It's the default Mexican food, right? So I'm going to make some tacos. We're going to have ourselves a Mexican fiesta. But you know what's better than going home and making tacos? If you call your friends and you say, hey, we're making tacos. We're having a Mexican fiesta. Why don't you make something and bring it along with you? Now we've got not just a Mexican fiesta. We have fiesta grande. And you know how you know it's fiesta grande because it's got the upside down exclamation point at the beginning and the right side up exclamation point at the end. Fiesta grande. Mas grande para todo mundo. So now, now, we got a, now we got a menu we got to make. I know I'm bringing tacos. Chris, you can bring some chips. 
Samantha, you can bring some salsa. Gene, you can bring guacamole. Ezekiel is bringing enchiladas. Stephen can bring sopapilla. The barbers can bring barbacoa. So now we've got a Mexican fiesta happening, and I'm for it. Fiesta grande. Yeah, but you know what happens is this. Half the people don't show up. And then what happens is half of the people that do show up didn't bring what they signed up for. And now you've got no bueno with an exclamation point at the front and at the end. You see, we had the vision of what we wanted to eat. We decided it wasn't going to be Subway. We decided it wasn't going to be Italian. We decided it was going to be a Mexican fiesta. We had a vision. We called everybody, and everybody signed up to bring something. We had unity. But at the point of engagement, it doesn't matter how good the vision is. It doesn't matter how many people are signed up and on board. At the point of actually showing up and bringing what you're supposed to bring and making it fiesta grande, you run the risk of having fiesta no bueno or no fiesta at all. Because engagement is the part where the dream becomes a reality. Engagement is the part when we, when we have discovered what we want in the vision, when we have designated who is going to get us there in the unity, but doing the thing and making your dreams more than just dreams is engagement. And that's what I want to talk about today with the Lord's help. Amen? If you have your Bibles, we're going to look in Acts chapter 2. We've been leading up to this for the past two weeks, and today, uh, hopefully, it'll pay off with the Lord's help. Acts chapter 2, 42, we have seen the unity come together as the Holy Spirit poured out on the disciples in the upper room, and, and they began to hear this message that was spoken out in all of their own home languages, which is wonderful and unique and a blessing from God. It brought unity among a diverse group of people, because that's what the name of Jesus does, and that's what the Word of God does. The Word of God takes people from the Middle East. It takes European people. It takes Asian people, African people, it takes American people, and it brings us all to the same table where we can sit down and say, look at the gospel and look at the story that God is telling in our lives, and it transcends time, and it transcends language, and it transcends culture, it transcends class, it transcends skin color. It is the greatest unifying factor that the world has ever known, and we see that happen on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is poured out. But now... You've got what happens when people engage with that. In Acts chapter 2, when we're going to start in verse 42, with the Lord's help today, we'll go through verse 47. And the Bible says this. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. What that is, is that is vision breeding unity. They devoted themselves to the teaching so they could have a clear vision of who Christ was and what he was doing. And because of that, they came together, they had fellowship, they broke bread, and they shared in times of prayer. Vision leads to unity. Amen. Verse 43. And awe came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. Because uh, believers don't follow after signs and wonders. Signs and wonders follow after believers. Verse 44. And all, some... Many, quite a few, you guys know how I play, all, all who believed were together and had all things in common, unity. And they were selling their possessions, their belongings, distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. You see, what happened is the vision that became unity became unity that became engagement. They didn't just get together and say, hey, we've got all things in common. We're best friends now. They said, we have all things in common. Now, let's take care of each other. Let's make sure that nobody falls behind. Let's make sure that nobody stumbles. Let's make sure that nobody is ever alone in their hard times, ever, ever. Unity becomes engagement. And day by day, because Vision, unity, and engagement don't take days off. Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes because vision, unity, and engagement are not limited to a building. They came together in the temple and they broke bread in their homes. It means if, if church ends for you when you walk through those doors, you didn't have church. You just watched the trailer. 
don't, don't take me to the food court and give me a little piece of chicken on a toothpick and tell me you bought me dinner. Okay? Listen, I like Costco just as much as anybody else. I got a Costco story. It don't have nothing to do with what I'm talking about today, but let me tell you, Costco betrayed me yesterday. Mm. This is not the time for that. Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, verse 46, they receive their food with glad and generous hearts. Glad hearts is how you receive. Generous hearts is how you give. You see, the Lord gives us in and out. There's a cycle. There's a give. There's a take. There's a process, and we are part of that process. Everybody breathe in. Now, what comes next? You've got to do one more thing. What is it? Or you're going to faint or die. Breathe in, breathe out. Lather, rinse, repeat. A glad heart that receives becomes a generous heart that gives. And a generous heart that gives makes room to gladly receive. See, God did not make this complicated. Are you with me? Amen. And the Lord, they, they praised God, they had favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now watch this. We talked about how vision became unity, how unity became engagement. Now engagement goes out to those who are not part of this circle and brings new people in to vision. Vision becomes unity, becomes engagement, becomes vision. Makes me want to hold up a baby lion and sing the circle of life. It's so simple, and it's so beautiful, and it's so effective, but, but maybe it's not been our experience as a church and as a church culture. And the problem that I have, forgive me as I stand up here and do my one-man therapy session, all right, my, my Michael Jackson, I'm going to look in the man in the mirror. That's what I'm doing right now, okay? Shimon, Woo! The culture of Christianity has become... Christianity of the culture. And cultural Christianity tends to become casual Christianity. We have favorite preachers who we can watch 90 second clips of on TikTok and call it a day, get a little baby boost. We have favorite worship songs that play in the background while we work or we drive like it's spiritual music. We used to have church Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. And while I am not hearkening to go back to those days, now the average believer shows up to church once a month. Once a month. We used to do it three times a week. We're content with consuming less. The risk when we consume less of producing less. Proverbs 14 23 says, In all toil there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. If the church, and I don't mean our church, I mean the church, the American church, is walking in poverty, meaning not generating the results that we hope to see, maybe it's time to see. How much is walk and how much is talk? It's a tough one, but here I am. We're looking in the mirror today. There's a call to engage. There's a call of God. God has spoken to his people, and I am called, and you are called, and we are called to engage, both generally and specifically. We need each other. Because there's skills that we have to get where we're going. There was a, a young lady in our youth group several years ago, <laughs> just the cutest little ditzy little thing. Her name was Michaela. And Michaela left after she graduated because she went to go join the army. And if you knew Michaela, and some of you actually probably do remember Michaela, Michaela was like, she's just this tiny little scrawny little thing. She had glasses way too big for her face and, and just smiled all the time, just the sweetest, happiest girl. And she wanted to go in the army to be a culinary expert. She wanted to go be a cook in the army, which is cool. I think that's pretty awesome. We prayed over her. We, we cheered her on. We thanked her in advance for her service. And Michaela went off to boot camp. She went to basic training. And then she got sent home by the army because Michaela could cook. 
but Michaela couldn't shoot. And apparently the army puts a pretty high priority on, can you shoot? She's like, I didn't sign up to shoot. I signed up to cook. And they said, great, but first we shoot. Everybody has to shoot. You have to take the gun apart. You have to put it together. You have to aim. You have to fire. You have to hit something, right? Michaela wasn't so good at that. And they sent her home. And she went on a different life course. She, she's doing fine this, you know, now. But the point is this. There is a general call to every believer and a specific call to every believer. Ezekiel's call on his life is very different than Michael's call on his life. It's very different than Jay's call on her life. It's very different than Stephanie's call on her life. It's very different than Rosa's call on her life. We all have these different specific calls. But there is a general call that applies to every believer. We are called to do certain things that are universal. Every soldier's got to shoot. Some of us cook. Some of us are chaplains. Some of us are radio operators. Some of us are engineers. But everybody shoots. I go back to Fiesta Grande. If it's just me, I got some taquitos. They're frozen taquitos. I didn't tell you all that going in. I was hoping you all were going to bring good stuff to make up for my terrible stuff. But that's my general calling, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 tells us that we are God's handiwork. We were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We were created to do good works that were prepared in advance for us. That's for all of us. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. That means each of us have received a gift and those gifts are going to express themselves in various forms. Some of us are smart people. Some of us are charismatic people. Some of us are terribly good-looking people. It's very rare to find someone that has all of those things. I didn't say it. Y'all thought it. So clearly, <laughs> I didn't say it. But whatever God's given you... It comes with the expectation that you're going to use it. If grandma knits you a sweater and then grandma comes to your house, she better find you wearing that sweater or grandma's going to be dismayed. And we don't like to dismay grandma. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 and 12 said he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and shepherds and teachers to equip saints for the work of ministry, building up the body of Christ. There's general calls, there's specific calls, but they are calls that we have been given and we have to obey. But in the uniqueness of who we are, there are certain things that we all have to do. Everybody has to shoot. There are certain things that we all have to do. I go back to my youth pastor days. I wrote this 20-some years ago, and there's a good handful of y'all that were in my youth group many, many years ago. Attitude check. Then it's on. You got a little timid there, right? At the end there, you backed off. You're like, nobody else is doing the neck bone thing. <laughs> We're going to open up every service like that in View Church, just so you know. It's on like neck bone, sucker. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> We're like, how do I unsign up for the dream team? Uh, <laughs> but this is a simple little acrostic that I said, let's just keep this in mind. Everybody say the word cross. Cross, it's real easy to remember. We're Christians, right? That's kind of our icon. If there is an app for Christianity, the icon, the, the little symbol for it is just a cross. It's easy to remember. Everybody gets it. But that cross breaks down into five real quick bonus steps. This is all you have to do. Number one, everybody say C. C is real easy. C is just come to church. If you've got one of these maroon seats underneath your bottom right now, congratulations. You have accomplished C. If you're watching online, you count too. But we're going to call it a lowercase c. Come to church is the basic thing. Show up. That's the basic thing. It's very basic. It's very simple. We live in a DoorDash world right now. We live in a world where you can do everything by having somebody go and do it for you. That's fantastic. But there is power when God's people come together. There is encouragement because people need not only to be in the house of the Lord so they can be encouraged, but someone in this house needs you to encourage them because it's breathe in and breathe out, right? It's a cycle. We get served. We serve. Sometimes people will complain, I don't go to church because I just don't feel like I'm getting fed. Well, what did you bring to the taco fiesta? I didn't bring nothing, but I'm going to eat something. Well, bring, bring something and, and see if you get fed a little bit better. Oh, man. Just, 
These are the days when I go home and I just feel like, man, I'm just such a jerk. I'm going to be down to nine hours of sleep tonight worried about that. It's the simple, most basic thing. You, uh, there's, uh, do buses run on Sunday? You can get a bus. You can get Uber. You can get a taxi. You can get a Schwinn. You can come to church. If you ain't got a Schwinn, you can get a friend. Someone will come pick you up for church. There's just so many different reasons. I'm tired. I don't feel like it. I've worked all week this week. I've just, I got a hangnail. Okay. All right, listen. I'm not going to dock your pay. I'm not the boss of you. But boy, I'm going to tell you what. There's people right now that got up this morning, stood outside of Disney's Magic Kingdom at 6.30 a.m. waiting for that rope to drop, that are going to be there through the fireworks tonight when they kick them out at the end of the day. They're going to be hot. They're going to be tired. They're going to be spending $12 for a thing of popcorn, and they spent $10,000 to be there today. And they're going to be so glad that they did. Their kids are going to be miserable. Just, ah! And they're going to be like, it's the happiest place on earth. Because if you want to be somewhere, you're going to be there no matter what it costs. No matter how, if it hurts. Ah, he's a jerk. Isn't he a jerk? That's me. R. Everybody say R. The pirate number. R. Everybody thinks that an R is a pirate's favorite letter, but it's the C he longs for. <laughs> How do I unsign up for the dream team? <laughs> R is reach out to others. We're no good to each other if we sit here in a silo. If you sit here and if you're going to sit here and just be isolated, just be locked off, you're not going to talk to anybody, you're not going to bless anybody, you're not going to let anybody talk to you or bless to you. Now, I understand that there's introverts, and I get that and I respect that. I have gotten past my days as an extroverted individual where I felt like my job was to cure introverts by giving them a microphone. Like, hey, you're shy. Come on up and sing karaoke. It'll cure you. I know better than that. It's okay to be introverted. But quiet people, introverted people can still be people, people. It's okay. Whatever way it looks like for you, remember, Jesus has given us various gifts. Sometimes people have to be bubbly, and sometimes people have to be a little less. Sometimes we wish the bubbly people were a little less. <laughs> I've been told before, <laughs> hey, we need you to turn it down a little. R stands for reaching out to others. Because if we're going to be siloed, if we're not going to love someone, if we're not going to support someone, if we're not going to encourage someone, we might as well not even come to church. We can be alone when we're alone. But when we're here, we reach out to people. We let people know, you know how good it is to see you in church today? Do, how are you doing? How can I pray for you? How's your, how's your son? How's your family? How's the job going? And what happens is, now that we're here, we can connect with each other. That's the first step of engagement is connecting with the family. This is the safest place to be you and be whatever the most awkward version of you is. Because in this place, you are loved. My wife, who loves it when I talk about her on Sundays. If you've ever met her, she's a very shy and quiet person. And I knew that about her from day one. I knew that she was shy, she was quiet, she was, you know, very reserved, she didn't talk a whole lot, and that's okay, I talk enough for both of us. But the, don't know that that was necessary, but cool. <laughs> but the first time I was around her and her family, I said, who is this girl? Because she shifted into a whole nother level. And I said, she's talking so much. What happened? I was ready to start. I'm like anointing oil. I'm ready to be like, demon, get. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. It was wonderful. It was beautiful because when she was around her family, when she was comfortable and safe, she opened up and good things came out. When we come to church and we learn to reach out to one another, the best part of us comes out. And there's people around you that need that. They need that. There's quiet people in this room 
who I won't call out. I'm so tempted to name names, and I'm not going to because I respect your quietness, that still make some of the biggest impact, the hugest contributions to people's lives without ever saying a word. Powerful. But that's what reaching out to others means. O is when we start getting specific. Offer what you have to God. If, you're, if you have an income, we pay our tithes. It's a simple thing. Uh, we're not going to be one of those churches that gets up here and says, you got to get more because I need a private jet so I can fly to the Bahamas and minister to the beach. <laughs> Someone down there is going to ask me if I want my hair wrapped, uh, and I got to pray that God would give them sight. Uh. If I don't have a tan by this time next month, you're not being faithful with what God's given you. No, we're not going to be that church. We believe in God. But we also believe in giving people the opportunity to trust God with what they have as a sign of gratitude. Maybe you're talented. Maybe you're like Michael Monet. Imagine a world where Michael Monet said, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to lead people. I'm not going to play and worship God and give other people the opportunity to worship with me. Imagine, imagine the, 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 the brightness that would be snuffed out if he didn't give what he had to God. Poor Ezekiel is tired every time he sees my name come up on his phone. I call him. I'm like, hey, Ezekiel. He's like, what you need, Pastor? You know why I love doing Ezekiel's voice? Because Ezekiel's voice is a comforting sound to me. Because when he answers my calls, I know, I know what my problem is, is going to be all right. And he helps me. He helps me in ways that I can't help myself. I say, I broke this thing. He's like, all right, I'll get it. I'll get some guys. We'll take care of it. That's his gifting. That's not my gifting. The only hammer I know is MC. Whatever it is that God's given you, you got to give it. You got to you got to give it. You got to give it. Do something with it. It's your gift. Don't squirrel it away. Don't hide it away. Use it. Invest it. There's stories. Read the story of the, the, the talents in the Bible. The, the master gives these guys talents. I'm not going to go into it today. If you know it, you already know it. If you don't know it, I ain't got enough time to talk about it. But whatever you do, don't bury it. Offer what you have to God. That's good for you. It's good. It blesses God. It blesses God's people. That C is come to church. R is reach out to others. O is offer what you have to God. S, super simple, study the word. I love that you guys come and listen to me get up here and make pop culture jokes and tell stories about my mom each week. I love that. But I don't have a magic Bible. I don't have the teacher's manual of Bible with all the answers in the back. It's like, oh, well, if you guys want to know what it really says, this is, the, this is actually what it says. My Bible is the same as your Bible. I use this Bible all the time. Do you know where I got this Bible from? I stole it from Kathy Liga. She brought it in. She said, I got this Bible. If you know anybody who wants it, I said, I want it. And I took it. I use this Bible. I'm wearing this thing out, Kathy. I'm sorry. I, you probably intended to go to somebody who, like, I, I needed it. it was my, it's my Bible now. You, my Bible's not magic. You have God's word. You have the, the, the cheat code guide to the universe. Please don't come in here and expect me to give you the answers when you got them all week long. And if you need help, that's what I'm here for, right? Because I'm, I'm seasoned on it. I don't have the secret, but I do have a little seasoning on me. And you have good leaders here in the church that will help you and help you to understand those things. That's okay. That's biblical. That's just teaching. That's discipling. But you have it. Learn it. Learn it. I took guitar lessons when I was a teenager from a youth leader named Bob Watkins. And I went to Bob's house, and, and I got a guitar, and, and he gave me this book that had all the chords and the, the fingering and the frets. And here's your exercises. Do, 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 rocking on the G string was the first one that I was supposed to do. And a week later, I came back to his house, and he said, all right, let me see what you got. And I said, I don't got anything. And he said, I gave you the book. And I said, yeah, but I was waiting for my lesson. He's like, I gave you the book. So you could be practicing so that when we got to the lesson next time, we could start there and then move to the next level. 
I didn't, I never, I never opened the book that he gave me. I still have it. 30 something years later, I still have that pink book. Never opened it. Therefore, guess how I, guess how my guitar skills are? Probably just as good as most Christians' Bible skills are, honestly. <laughs> Did you know that these pages come apart? <laughs> there are words on here. I know that sounds mean. I am using hyperbole to make a point. I'm sure that you are all wonderful Christians and that you love God's word. But just make sure that loving God's word and doing something about your love for God's word are part of your, your morning routine, okay? Part of your, your daily breakfast, part of your balanced diet so that we can apply it. Because, Bill, does God's word make a difference in your life? You better believe it. But you know what? God, God, God's word might as well be the phone book or a Spider-Man comic book if you don't open it. It's just a book. But when you open it, those words come to life. I ain't got time to, to, to go on too, too much longer. We got one more S, and that's seek him in prayer. Seek him in prayer. Seek him in prayer. You know how I get excited when, when I call Ezekiel, and he's like, hey, I'm not going to do it. And he answers, God gets excited when we call on his name. God gets excited if you say Father, if you say Jesus, if you say Lord, if you say Daddy God, if you say Yeshua. If you say master, heavenly father, when you speak to God, he inclines his ears and listens. And if you don't know that to be true, he said that it was true in his Bible. And if, if you don't believe me, look in there. You have the same answers that I do. Come to church. Reach out to others. Offer what you have to God. Seek him in prayer and study the word. Those, those, that's cross. That's a pretty good way to live by it. That's a good general starting point. Can I get an Amen. Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 says, Show yourself in all respects, in all respects, to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity, dignity, and a sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. That word model means like a prototype. Whatever you do, if somebody copies you, they're going to be okay. If somebody copies the thing that you are demonstrating, they're going to be close to Jesus like you. Boy, there have been times in my life where for, if you took away this, if you took away the what I say, what I do wasn't going to get anybody anywhere near Jesus. Well, you better make sure you have your what you're saying, what you do on the same page. Because what you do is always going to be louder than what you say. Amen? And 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the Lord, in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This is a new day. We're entering together into a new season. And I, I believe that God might be trying to bring something out of you in a new way. This is, this is the process that God goes by. Think about David. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, in, in, in 1 Samuel, you got David, the boy wonder there. He's a shepherd who is called and anointed to be the king. And he goes to fight Goliath with a shepherd's weapon. So this is, this is an escalation. You got a shepherd, that's the start. King, that's the destination. And along the journey, this shepherd goes to fight a giant with the weapon of a shepherd, a sling and a stone. He defeated the giant... And he left the battlefield with Goliath's sword, not as David the shepherd, but as David the warrior. And God led David the warrior into exile, hiding from the madness of King Saul. And when he emerged from the wilderness, he was David the king. Every step used where he was, and through the process of engagement, faithfulness and engagement... God fulfilled the vision that was put on him all the way back at step one. You're going to be king. Okay, we'll put the crown on my head now. Nope. First, you're going to have to fight a giant. Then you're going to have to go into exile. You're going to have to write some psalms. And then, and then, when we first launched Sanctuary Longwood, back in the day, I'm going to talk about my wife, Sheena, Never held a microphone, ever. And now she sings every single week. So 
Sabrina, you're on a rotation. You don't sing every single week. Cassie, you don't sing every single week. Natalie, mm -mm. Chris, I don't. Sheena sings every single week. When we had to start, we, we were going through the process. Well, my wife does not like to be on camera. And not only does she not like to be on camera, she sure don't like speaking on camera. But as part of this video, we both had to speak. I took some still shots from the video recording, the unedited video recording. And if you saw the look on her face, she looks at me like I'm a hero, like I'm a champion. Not on that day. On that day, it was vile contempt. It was to the point where Stephen, who was filming this video, at one point said, I'm just going to give you guys a minute and left the room. It was, it was rough. Well, we did a video the other day for View Church, and she spoke on that video like four times. I swear if she ever learns how to preach, you won't need me no more. It might not be a big deal for some of you guys to say, she talked on video, big deal. It's a big deal because she was a shepherd who learned how to become a warrior, learning how to become a king, right? Like that's, we, we take, engagement brings us, brings promotion. Engagement changes the story, but it changes us too. At a certain point, the for the disciples, engagement looked like waiting in an upper room. The Lord said, go there and wait in the upper room. But then God came in and poured his Holy Spirit on them, and it would have no longer been appropriate for them to wait in the upper room. They had to pour out and be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. See, God might be changing what you've been and where you've been for where he wants you to be. Engagement will take you there. You can't do that. You can't have a vision and then just sit there and wait for vision just to show up like an Amazon package. Sometimes you got to go get it. Somebody say, go get it. Go get it. You better go get it. So much can happen if we'll just engage, if we just do the thing. I was in a conference last weekend for pastors, and, and, and the speaker that was there said something that was very profound. He said, pastors, do you know what your one job is? And I said, one job? I got me 97 jobs. My job description looks like a CVS receipt. pretty sure my job description was written by the Energizer Bunny. It keeps going and going and going. And if you know that, you're, you probably woke up with a stiff back this morning because you're old. He said, your one job, pastors, is to communicate vision. That's your job. Everything else is everyone else's job. I said, that's at first, my, my inclination was to disagree with them. But then you know what I, I saw when I came back? We were here, and, and, and we made the announcement of the name of the church. We had special guests, Bishop Dusty and Jackie Wilson were with us. And, and after church, I, you got to be a little diplomatic, right? We were going to take them to lunch. And, and Pastor Stephanie, she said, hey, just go. Just go. We got this. You go take care of them. Do what only you can do. And, and we'll take care of this. We'll shut everything down. And I thought, oh, that's great. What an awesome relief. What a, what a wonderful thing for the team to do. And as I'm walking out, I get a message that our friend Oliver is down the road, and Oliver has suffered a flat tire in his, in his vehicle. <sighs> okay? Let's go help Oliver. Let's go do this. We can go take care of our friend and our brother. And you know what I saw? I saw Josh and a couple guys get up, run down the street, and go help Oliver to get his tire fixed. And I went, oh, oh okay, all right, cool, cool. Hey, the, 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 it's, it's, we're, that's cool, that's great, awesome. Let's get out of here. And then we're leaving. Nellie's gets in her car. She got you there with her, Princey. She's going to take you home. She puts her key in the car, and the car just goes... Car won't start. All right. Let me get my jumper. Before I could even process the thought, here comes 
Chris Gonzalez running over there with this car jumper charger thing, and he puts it on there, and he's like, let's get our car started. We'll do this. Some men of the church are coming around saying, let's get your, car, your battery tested. Let's do all these things. And I didn't have to do a single thing. And you know what? For the, that was, the, that was the, the most, I don't care. We've had great services here. We've had moments in the altar where God is doing wonderful. We have had people saved and baptized. And in that moment, I felt maybe more like we were a real church than I had in, in forever. Because I said, look at people. Look at God's people engaging to care for God's people. Solving problems. Extending care. Because Chris had a jumper. And he said, there's someone who needs a jump. Let me engage in that situation. Father God, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for the power uh, and the challenge. It's hard, God, to hear sometimes these these things that make us rethink who we are and and what we've done. But God, I just pray that as as we line up our own lives and our own stories with what you're calling us to do and calling us to be, when we line up our lives with the name of Jesus and the word of God, God, I feel like we are compelled to say, Lord, open our eyes and make us people of vision. Extend our hearts and our hands and make us people of unity. And give us sturdy boots so that we can walk this thing out in in a spirit of engagement. God, help us to be the church that you have called us to be in the city in which you have called us to serve, Jesus. Help us to be more than just spectators. Help us to be more than just people who who show up and and, and call ourselves a thing but don't ever actually live like the thing. But God, help us to be your church, your hands and feet and heart in this world in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Amen. I got a call on Monday. We were filming a, the, the video. I was so proud of Sheena for talking on the video. And we had just gotten done. My son just said, cut. And we were turning the lights off from the video. And we were getting ready to leave. And I got a call from, uh, from Lise Mavi. That's not unusual. And I said, hey, what's up? And she was crying. Okay, now I'm listening. What's going on? What's wrong? And she said, I was just in a very serious car accident. Where are you? Interstate 95. I'm on my way. So Sheen and I got in the car, and uh, I drove with some haste to Interstate 95 in Daytona. And we got there off of I-4, turned on to 95, and all of a sudden my Google Maps was a red line. Red line, non-moving traffic. Everything was real slow. And I'm anxious now, right? I'm in like Batman mode. I'm, let me go protect my people. Red line traffic going super, super slow. Simara, God is good, is he not? Your daughter's in the back and she's fine, right? Okay, I don't want to spoil the ending. This might lived. But breathe, mommy. Breathe, mommy. You know what all those, that, that red line came from? All those people that do the thing that we do when we go down the road and we see an accident, all of those people were driving slow to see her car smashed up face down in a ditch. All those people were going real slow to watch the thing that happened, just to see. And I could see her across the other way. I'm going north, she's going south. I can't, I can't, I got to get off and turn around and come back. But I can see her standing on the side of the road with the state trooper and with her car smashed into just oblivion. And I say, I got to get to her. I got to get to her right now. You know, we, Sheena and I are like trying to get there. And a lot of people were sitting and watching. We finally got off and we turned around and we got to where she was. I was frustrated because I was on a mission. I knew what I was going to do. I was going to help our friend. I was going to help our family member. 
and all these strangers, regardless of their origin, regardless of their destination, they were unified by curiosity, but not me. I was determined because of the mission that I was on to go get someone I care about out of the ditch. Hundreds and hundreds of people drove by and looked. Didn't stop. I would expect them to. It'd be weird if they did, right? Our city, our world is in a ditch. Are we content to contribute to the red line of onlookers that just look and go, huh, how about that? And then scroll on to the next thing on our, our news feed, to the next thing on our stories, to the next reel, and just say, man, that's crazy. Can you believe that? Because there's a big difference in being surrounded and in being supported. Lots of people will surround you. Lots of churches will surround the hurt and the lost and will say, gosh, can you believe them? Look at the way they dress. Listen to the way they talk. Look at the way they live. I would like for View Church to be the church that gets somebody out of the ditch. Lots of people will surround you. Very few people will support you. Lots of people will surround you and slow down and look as long as they see something that interests them. There are people that will come to a church as long as the church interests them, entertains them, amuses them, captures their attention. But as soon as the work starts, they're like, see ya. But people who support you will get in the ditch with you if you're hurting, and they'll help lift you out. They'll help get you home. What does this city need View Church to be? We can talk about vision, unity, and engagement all day long, but this city needs a church to be a church who sees the needs in light of eternity, a body that comes together in unity to bring whatever we can, and a movement that's going to work to meet those needs for God's glory. This is not easy. It is work. It is sacrifice, but it will bring about a wonderful result, and it starts with come to church, reach out to others, offer what you have to God, study the word, and seek him in prayer. It starts with that. It continues with what are you gifted at? What is the superpower that God gave you. Use it, baby. Psalm chapter 90 verses 16 and 17 says, let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, whatever you do, whatever you do. Everybody say, whatever. Whatever you do, Work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Romans 12, 11 says, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. God is calling us, not me and Sheena, us. And if you're here for the first time today, consider that your handcrafted invitation to be a part of what God is doing here. We're glad that you're here glad that you're here. We hope to get to know you better. But God is calling us to do the work that it takes to get ourselves out of the ditch and to take as many people with us. Because it's easier to go down into a ditch than it is to climb up on the hill. It's work to climb up on the hill, but I'm going to tell you what, the view is way better. View. What do you know? Father God, I do pray blessings over your people today. Lord, I pray that this holy week would be a week of encouragement to them. God, that you would bless them 
and help them to know that you have got a plan for them that sometimes leads them through the valley, sometimes leads them through a ditch, sometimes leads them to a cross, but always leads them to a resurrection and to glory for your name's sake. Lord, I just pray your protection on them. For those in the sound of my voice that don't know you and don't have a relationship with you, God, I encourage them to just trust you with their heart, to believe in you. Lord, that that none of us are perfect, that all of us have fallen short of your glory. All of us have, have sinned and missed the mark. But God, you have paid because of your death on the cross for all of our sins. You've paid the full price. And if we just believe in you, our bill is wiped clean. God, we can be made new in you. Help us to trust and believe and confess that in Jesus' name to receive that gift of your love and salvation. Now, Lord, I pray that today your people within the sound of my voice, both here and watching online, would be not motivated but elevated to walk this thing out, God, to walk out the engagement of the calling, the blessing, and the vision that you've placed in their lives according to the promises of your word and the leading of your Holy Spirit. We give you all honor and all glory in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, Yeshua, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen and amen. Church, can we just give God thanks and praise for who he is and what he does? Amen. 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 Thank you again so much for being with us. If it is your first time, and I know we do have some first-time guests, I just don't want to say, again, from all of us, thank you so much for being with us. It's, it's been a real privilege. There are some of the most amazing people you'll ever want to meet in this room. And if you're an introvert, I don't want to make this weird for you, but just fist bump somebody. Maybe tell them your name. They'll be glad that they knew your name. Introduce yourself and say hello. Just take all I ask, the next five minutes. And just meet somebody. Say hello to somebody. Stop by our guest services and get some Easter cards. And invite somebody to come to church this weekend for Good Friday service and for Easter service. You never know. You might give somebody a card and invite them to church. And they might actually show up. Crazier things have happened. We're so glad that you're with us today. And that you're part of what God is leading us to in this next season. I pray blessings over you in the name of Jesus Amen, amen, amen. I love you. God bless you. We do not have midweek on Thursday, but we will be here on Good Friday at 7 o'clock. Please 